On November 20, 2024, in a significant move as his term nears its end, President Joe Biden's administration announced the delivery of anti-personnel mines to Ukraine. This decision represents a notable shift in U.S. military support, reflecting the evolving dynamics of the war as it approaches its 1,000th day. The move follows the U.S. authorization of Ukrainian strikes on Russian territory, highlighting the adaptation of U.S. policy to the changing tactics of the Russian military and the increasing challenges faced by Ukrainian forces. The U.S. will supply Ukraine with non-persistent anti-personnel mines, which are designed to deactivate automatically after a set period. This is intended to minimize risks to civilians once the mines are no longer active. These mines, equipped with self-destruction mechanisms, are considered a more humane alternative to traditional landmines, which pose long-term dangers to civilian populations. Among the possible candidates for this supply are several U.S. models, including the M86 Pursuit Deterrent Munition, PDM, M74 Anti-Personnel Mine, M87A1 Wide Area Mine WAM, and M131 Modular Pack Mine System, MOPMS. All of these mines are designed with automatic deactivation features that render them inert once their operational period expires. The M86 PDM, for example, is typically used for limited tactical missions. It is powered by an internal battery and deactivates once the battery's energy is depleted. The M74 mine, part of the Area Denial Artillery Munition, Atom System, is deployed via artillery and self-destructs within 4 to 48 hours of activation. Other systems, like the M87A1 and M131, allow for remote deployment of both anti-personnel and anti-tank mines, offering Ukraine enhanced flexibility in its defense strategy. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin defended the decision, emphasizing the shift in Russian military tactics. Russian forces, unable to achieve success with mechanized units, have increasingly relied on lighter ground forces to pave the way for armored divisions. In this context, anti-personnel mines are seen as an effective tool for disrupting such advances and slowing enemy movements. While the U.S. has supplied Ukraine with anti-tank mines since the onset of the conflict in 2022, the inclusion of anti-personnel mines signifies a significant escalation in military support. These mines are expected to help secure key strategic regions, particularly in areas like Donbass and the Kursk region, where Russian advances have been persistent. Despite their tactical benefits, the use of anti-personnel mines has raised serious humanitarian concerns. Organizations like Amnesty International and the Red Cross have questioned whether these weapons, even with self-destruct features, can be deployed safely without endangering civilians. While the non-persistent nature of the mines reduces the risk of long-term harm, the danger during their active period remains significant. Further complicating the decision is Ukraine's commitment under the Ottawa Convention, which bans the use of anti-personnel mines. The inclusion of such devices in Ukraine's defense strategy raises questions about the country's adherence to international norms and its long-term stance on the treaty. This decision is part of a broader pattern of increased U.S. support for Ukraine, including the recent authorization of Atakm's long-range missiles for strikes on Russian territory. These moves come at a critical juncture, as President-elect Donald Trump is set to take office in two months. Trump, a vocal critic of U.S. involvement in Ukraine, has pledged to swiftly end the conflict, which has motivated the Biden administration to strengthen Ukraine's defense capabilities before the transition of power. The situation has also taken on an international dimension, with reports suggesting that North Korean troops are now fighting alongside Russian forces. In response, the U.S. has increased its military aid to Ukraine, including a $275 million package featuring HIMAR systems, artillery munitions, and Javelin anti-tank missiles. The international community remains divided on the use of anti-personnel mines in the conflict. Some U.S. allies, such as Norway, have expressed concerns about the potential humanitarian consequences, while others, including the United Kingdom, have supported more aggressive measures, such as supplying Ukraine with storm shadow cruise missiles. France, meanwhile, has maintained discretion regarding its involvement, particularly with the use of scalp missiles. As the war continues, the introduction of anti-personnel mines marks a significant shift in Ukraine's defensive strategy. These mines are expected to have immediate tactical benefits in slowing Russian advances, but their long-term implications, both in terms of humanitarian concerns and international law, will continue to be a point of debate. In conclusion, while the U.S. decision to supply anti-personnel mines offers Ukraine a critical tool in its ongoing defense, it also highlights the complex ethical and strategic dilemmas of modern warfare. 
The coming months will likely reveal the broader consequences of this decision on the battlefield and in international diplomatic circles.